what up? <laughs> hey, y'all. Good afternoon to my East Coasters. Good morning to my West Coasters. Good evening to anybody in other countries that are listening. I don't know if y'all are, but if y'all are, that would be really cool. Welcome to my digital podcast and talk show called Just Call Me with Lexi Brown. I'm stepping out of my WNBA bubble to talk all things pop culture and sports. Um, we had a very eventful weekend. We had the, um, what do we have? Oh, yeah. The NCAA tournament, the Final Four. Um, it was so much fun. And by it, I mean the women's Final Four. No shade, no shade. But the men's Final Four did not give what it was supposed to. Well, not even a little bit. But congratulations to the Baylor men for running that tournament the way that they did. Uh, they were really fun to watch the last few weeks, even though I didn't really watch them that much. <laughs> I watched them beat the shit out of uh, Gonzaga, though. That was definitely really, really fun to watch. Um, I will say I did pick Gonzaga to win. I fell, I fell victim to the um, undefeated streak, but we have to take into consideration what conference that they played in because there was definitely weak. Um, no shade to the WCC conference, but they had never seen a team like Baylor before, and it showed. So uh, I don't think they were ready for it. I wasn't ready for Baylor to come out the way that they did, but it was a lot of fun to watch them. Congratulations to them again. Um, I think that Baylor was going to – after my name was going to happen, but I thought the you know, fundamentally sound boys were going to uh, take the W, but – Baylor was also very fundamentally sound offensively and defensively. So they took home the trophy. Congrats to them. To be honest with you, I really wish that both Baylor men and women won the tournament. So speaking of the women's tournament, Baylor women, my heart is still breaking for y'all because y'all should have been in that final four. But hey, things happen. Congratulations to Stanford. Congratulations to Haley Jones for winning the tournament. Most outstanding player. She was incredible. I love watching her play. She's just so calm and poised and makes the right decisions. I love that. They were definitely the most underrated, least talked about number one seed I've ever seen in a tournament. Like, I'm pretty sure that they were the overall one seed. They were the number one team in the country for the majority. And you would have no idea that. They were either one of those things based on the media. Um, also, I want to give a congratulations to Arizona. They did their thing through the tournament. Ari McDonald personally was my most outstanding player. I don't even know if they can give outstanding players to the losing team, but I think she absolutely deserved it. She was incredible. She was amazing. I'm so excited for her to come to the W and, and show her skill set at, at the next level. Coach Barnes was also equally incredible. She is my new favorite coach in the NCAA. Um, actually, after Don Staley, of course. Um, she's just, I love her. Her energy is everything. I loved her little video um, that they got of her when she was telling her girls, her team, like all the dirt, all the leaving them. I love that. I love that video. And people were really upset about it. And I, wanted, I just want to know why. It was a very private moment with her team. And I'm sure she said worse things in the locker room and in practices. But it, like, really upset people. I mean, I don't know how many people it really upset. But the fact that it upset anybody at all is annoying to me. Because I remember seeing a video of the Michigan State men's coach yanking up one of his players, screaming at him, and everyone was like, yeah, that's how you toughen them up. That's how you coach them. He was probably being disrespectful. Like, no. First of all, you should never put your hands on your player, one. And two, like, yeah, there's like a there's a level of intensity that you have in a game and in a practice setting, but it is never okay to scream in a child's face. So – I just thought that was funny that the different reactions, probably obviously because she's a woman, 
you know, you can't show passion or be um, mad or excessively loud or something because then everyone's like, oh my God, she's then. I hate that. But shout out to Coach Barnes. Also another shout out to her because um, they reported that at halftime of the national championship game, she was in the locker room breastfeeding for her baby. Like, don't you just love when women do women magical things? It's the halftime of the national championship and she's being a, a super mom. Like, you men could never, you men could never, ever, ever. <laughs> so I also thought that was a beautiful moment. I think Holly Rowe did an amazing job. Shout out Holly, I love you. Um, she said the most amazing thing. She said, normalize working mothers. And I thought that was such a powerful statement because I think there's such a, a negative stigma towards women who choose to pursue their careers even while simultaneously having a family and, and raising kids. And it's definitely possible. We see it every day. Yet there's still such a, just a negativity that surrounds that. And I'm hoping that slowly but surely we can change that stigma because a, a woman who can give birth, um, raise babies, and be mom at the career that she chooses, like that's just incredible. That's amazing. I think it should be applauded and it should never be frowned upon. And I think that that was just a really, really amazing moment for that team and for that coach. I really wish they won. They also were left out of the Final Four promo video. What? NCAA has about 65 strikes throughout this tournament, I swear. Um, how do you leave an entire team out of a promo video? Like, how many people did that go through and people okayed it and they were like, yeah, this looks good. Like, did no one like, oh, it's just so annoying that things like this keep happening to women's teams and programs because the men, the men's video would never leave out an entire team involved in their final four. So I thought that that was completely disrespectful. Another shortcoming of the NCAA during their tournament, they quickly fixed it after, again, being bullied on the internet. Um, and then Arizona came out and busted UConn in the mouth. And I love that for them. I had UConn winning it all. I really did. I did not expect Arizona to come out and play the way that they did. So I thought that that was an amazing game. I don't think Arizona trailed at all that entire game. It was just really, it was really fun to watch. And of course, in ESPN fashion, the day after Stanford wins the championship, they put out a too early top 25 list and UConn is front and center. And I'm just like, Y'all couldn't wait a day. Y'all could have wait 48 hours before y'all start talking about a team that didn't win the chip. I don't know. I think you always should put the defending champions as one, unless they're losing their entire roster, which Stanford is not. So I'm just very much confused as to why they decided to do that. But hey, that's what ESPN does. Um, can't be mad at the media for everything. They're just doing their job, I guess. But I thought that that was extremely annoying. And if I was Stanford, I'm really, really upset, 100%. But congrats to Baylor men and Stanford women for winning the national championships. Now we can focus on the WNBA season, people. Let's do that. Let's support us. Let's love us. Let's bring your fandom from college to the pros because we need it and this season's gonna be amazing. Okay, now we are moving on. I'm not taking Collins for college stuff, but I will accept Collins for NBA stuff. And I might even accept Collins for this next topic that I'm about to do, okay? So we're gonna move on to some pop culture stuff. And if anybody has been on Twitter the last few days, there's been this viral tweet that's been going around and it's this dude and his friend friend, quote unquote. 
and he said, normalize friendship dates. Okay. So I don't know what a friend, I don't know what a friendship date is. If I'm going out to do something with a friend, I'm just going out to do something with a friend. I will never call it a date. Um, Cause then it's no longer in the, within the realms of friendship. So the, um, the tweet went crazy. And the funny thing about this tweet is I, I don't personally know this dude, but there's a girl that I used to follow on Instagram and I think it's her man or was her man. There, we got the picture up. I love this. Okay. So here, if you're watching, I just put up the, the picture of the tweet. And if you're just listening, just search up normalize friendship dates and I'm sure it'll pop up. So I knew the girl, like we were Instagram friends and they were on the course of, you know, let's be relationship goals. Let's post corny videos. Let's make TikToks together. Like they were that couple. Okay. And they were really annoying. <laughs> and so now she's disappeared from Instagram. I never followed him, so I don't know where his Instagram is. But now I see this man on Twitter being equally corny, but now with his homegirl. So here's my thoughts on platonic friendships with the opposite sex as an adult. It is definitely possible. One of my best friends is a boy, right? So Darius, if you guys were on, if you guys listened to my podcast last week, he was on talking about his Juco experience. Okay. Me and Darius have been friends since I was 16. So that's 10 years now. So I think it is definitely easier to develop friends or develop a friendship with the opposite sex when you're younger, because just life is easier. You're not thinking about extra things. You're not thinking about dating. You're not thinking about starting a family. You're not thinking about nothing extra. So when you meet a person that you vibe with when you're 15, like that probably is going to be one of your friends for life. So that's what happened with Darius. So the pictures that the dude posted, they didn't look like they weren't really extra to me. I didn't think that there was anything wrong with the pictures. Um, and then somebody tweeted that because they were both extremely attractive, people already looked at it in a weird way, which I 100% agree with because for some reason, two attractive people can't be friends, trust me, because me and Darius, I would consider myself attractive. I would consider Darius attractive. So people always ask me if that's my man's. And no, he is not. And it has never been like that between us, which is why I love him so much. So the weird part about the pictures was like they were like dressed up, like they was going to like a ball or like a romantic dinner. Like it was it was weird and very attention seeking in my opinion. So apparently the lady had a wedding ring, but does that really matter? Um, <laughs> so he got a little defensive in the, on the tweet and he was like, you can tell that y'all don't like respect women based on your responses. But then like he just started this whole weird thing on Twitter. So like now people are like being extra on Twitter, but what's new? His first was his first mistake was calling it a date. His second mistake was posting these pictures on Twitter thinking that he was being cute or something because I don't know what he thought that Twitter was going to respond with. So I just think that it's definitely possible to platonic relationship with the opposite sex as an adult. And both people just have to be really mature. And you just don't, you don't find that all the time, unfortunately. And I know that I could definitely be friends with somebody of the opposite sex at 26, a new friend. Like I could meet a new person and we could become friends and it would just be that. Have I experienced that same energy in return in the last few years of my life? No. And I'm not taking any of the blame for that because people don't know how to control themselves. So uh, I'm cool with my one best friend that's a guy. I think that every girl should have at least one guy friend that is just that, just your friend. He helps me with a lot of stuff. He puts me on game. He. <laughs> He tells me when I'm acting dumb, when I'm being childish, when I'm being sensitive. 
he's deaf and I do the same for him. So I think platonic friendships are definitely important, but don't call your, don't call your outings dates. Like what? Dates for, are for people who you're dating. I don't know, but I can't wait to see like how this progresses because now the dude is like Twitter famous. So I wonder if he's gonna continue to be a cornball on the internet. Like before. Okay, next thing that we can talk about. Um we're gonna talk about soy. So I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, I loved Soldier Boy. Like a lot. Like sit in front of my computer for hours and record myself on my back book in photo booth doing all the dances. Like that's how much I love Soulja Boy. So I don't know where he's been. I don't know uh, if he's been making music. If he Clearly he's still making money, but I don't know what he's doing. And every time he comes on Twitter talking, he just says some wild shit. And he's usually right. So I, I don't know if y'all remember, I think he was on Breakfast Club when he said the first time when he said that Drake steals stole all his flows. So I didn't necessarily agree with that, but that interview was hilarious. And if you have not watched it yet, y'all need to go watch it. Like Soldier Boy is funny and he's funny because he be mad, like he be serious, he be mad, but like he's still funny. Like <laughs> and he's not even meaning to be funny. So that was the first time he said something crazy. And then this recently he tweeted about being the first viral sensation, like rapper, which I agree with because Soulja Boy had us all on YouTube all day and all night dancing and, and rapping and recording ourselves and putting it on YouTube and putting it on MySpace and stuff. So I do think he was the first viral sensation. I think we need to give Soulja Boy his props because the way rappers rap now, they like, rap for TikTok and they rap for kids to dance to their songs. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like you gotta get to the bag, I get it. Some of these songs are very much corny. I just saw, uh, shoot, what is his name? NLE Choppa, he posted on his Instagram his song, which was a decent song, and then he did a dance to it, which, <laughs> The dance was terrible. The dance was awful. Like the rappers need to leave it to the kids to make the dances to the songs. They just need to make the songs because I don't know what he was doing. It was very much giving, I don't know. It was giving, I don't know. It was bad. But he put it on the, he put it on the internet and he thought he was doing something. Um, my favorite Soulja Boy song. Is this even, honestly, I can't even say, are all the crank that dances and songs, are they all made by Soulja Boy? Because I don't even know. Because my favorite crank that song was Crank That Batman. Like, that was my favorite one. But I don't even know if Soulja Boy made that. But he started Crank That, crank that Soulja Boy, so I just figured that he's just going to get credit for all the other songs, even though he didn't make them. But that's what I used to do in my free time. So I don't know why people our age make fun of people on TikTok for like standing in front of their cameras all day and dance because we did the same thing. We just didn't have an app to put it on. And I wish I had all these videos <laughs> because I made so many, it's so embarrassing. Um, but yeah, I think we need to give Soulja Boy his flowers even though he's sometimes corny, sometimes extra. We can't forget when him and Bow Wow had their little video beef with the sound effects from their photo booth cameras. And the good times, we bring those times back. Back when the internet was fun and not toxic. The internet is so awful now, I hate it. But I can't wait for it because then, then what would I do with my days? Go outside, <laughs> pick flowers. I don't know, but we need to give we need to give Soldier Boy his flowers. He deserves it. I love I love Soldier Boy, and he definitely shaped my childhood. And I'm not I'm and I'm very confident when I say that he shaped my childhood. And I still can't really dance very well, but 
here I am still trying. Okay, we're gonna move on to a little bit of entertainment talk. Um, Space Jam 2 trailer came out. Are we excited? Are we happy about it? Are we pleased? I Have y'all seen Ready Player One? Because that's what Space Jam 2 was giving. And I liked it. I'm still not really sure what it's about. Um, but what was the what was first Space Jam really about? Um, not really anything. So I think that's what makes it fun. I think the, the least the least amount of plot, the better. So we can just enjoy the fact that LeBron is in a movie, that Zendaya is Lola Bunny. Everybody. How Bron got Zendaya to be Lola Bunny, I don't know. Gotta be, she must have got paid because I never thought that she would be Lola Bunny. Let's see, who did I see in there? We saw a Dame Lillard cartoon. We saw Anthony Davis cartoon. We saw Diana Taurasi's cartoon. We saw NECA. Who else was in there? I can't remember who else. I only remember Diana because they put her image everywhere and people were really mad about how her cartoon looks. But I'm just like, that's the point of a cartoon. Like, it has to be like exaggerated. You don't want things to look real because then why would you just not put the real people in the movie? It's a cartoon. People are so sensitive about everything. People were mad that freaking, uh, who were they mad at? They were mad that Lola Bunny looked different. Like she wasn't as sexy as the beginning. But I'm just like, why are y'all mad about a cartoon funny? Y'all need to have a conversation with yourselves. I'm just like, why are y'all mad that Lola Bunny just looks like a little kid bunny? Oh my God, people are so weird. People are so weird. But the Space Jam movie looks amazing. I'm glad it's coming out on HBO Max because I probably wouldn't pay a lot of money to go see it in theaters, if I'm being honest with y'all. So I'm definitely gonna be watching it in my bed somewhere. Um, but I think it's really cool that they're making another Space Jam. I think it's cool that Bron is in it. Have, if y'all, did y'all, cause I know a lot of people probably like, Bron can't even act. What was the movie? I think it was called Trainwreck. LeBron was in a movie with Amy Amy Schumer, I want to say. It was a while ago, but it was called Trainwreck. And he was in it. He was, like, playing himself, though. But, like, he did a really, really good job. And he was really funny. So LeBron is, like, a pretty good actor. And I'm excited for him to be um, in this movie. And... Yeah, so if you guys haven't seen Trainwreck, it's a little inappropriate for children. So if kids are watching or listening, don't watch it. Or just ask your parents. But any uh, grown person, y'all need to watch Trainwreck because LeBron was really funny in it and I really enjoyed it. And Space Jam 2, I don't know when it's coming out. I think it's sometime in the summertime. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool that he included NBA and WNBA players. So let's get excited and support him speaking of movies other movies so i i don't love godzilla and king kong like those are not two movies that i've really ever watched in my life i saw king kong once in the theaters a while ago and the movie was like six hours and then i think he like died at the end king kong and i cried I was young. I wasn't that young, but like I cried and I never went back to a King Kong movie after that. But the movie was too long. And I'm like, how do y'all make a movie about a giant <laughs> gorilla? <laughs> so I was not planning on watching the Godzilla Kong movie because I did not care about it. But I saw everybody on Twitter talking about how great it was, how amazing it was. Man, I turned that movie on. I got through 40 minutes and that was it. One, because I was so confused. See, for me, when it comes to movies, I love a movie, unless it's a cartoon, which I just wanna like enjoy the cartoon and be a little kid. Unless it's a cartoon, 
I need a movie with like a plot that I need to follow. And at the end, I'll be like, oh my God, that was the best movie I've ever seen. Even though it wasn't the best movie I've ever seen. I like movies that um, make me think a little bit. And I like scary movies. I like, thr I don't like horror movies. I mean, I watch horror movies, but I like thriller movies. Like Edge of My Seat, you don't know what's about to happen. The ending will freaking make you go crazy, things like that. So watching Godzilla, I just couldn't get into it because I had no idea what the plot was and I had no idea um, what was going on. Also, I thought Godzilla looked crazy. Like, I don't know, like you have the gorilla who looks like lifelike and then you have Godzilla who looks like, I can't even describe what he looked like. I didn't like how Godzilla looked. <laughs> so I personally hated it and I didn't even watch it or finish it. So people were like, oh, just watch the fights, watch. I don't care about the fake monster fighting. I don't care about that. Like people said that like that was gonna change my mind, but apparently it was a great movie. I didn't like it. I didn't finish it. I won't ever finish it. Um, so there's my review of Godzilla vs. Kong. So. Watch it for yourselves and, and make your own decisions. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about um, for entertainment, and this is like a good segue to the NBA segment of the show, but um, <laughs> Paul Pierce, can we talk about it? Can we talk about this man and what he did? So Paul Pierce went on Instagram Live and I don't even, he wasn't even talking about nothing. He was like talking like in circles, but that's not even the bad part. Bad part is he was smoking weed, I'm pretty sure. And he had like strippers in the, in the live. Like, live your life, Paul, you a grown ass man. But, um, I just, I'm at a loss for words because not only did the whole world see it, but then the man lost his job at ESPN, which I think that he was um, parting ways with ESPN anyway because they didn't really make a big deal about it. He didn't really make a big deal about it. I personally wasn't really a fan of Paul Pierce on ESPN. He was like the king of terrible takes constantly. Everything he said was just wrong. Like for 99% of his airtime, he just said wrong information and wrong things and just opinions that nobody ever would agree with, except for like people who troll on the internet. But I am still trying to figure out what he was thinking. Like one, I don't even know. I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt because he did once tweet a picture of a rocket emoji instead of the actual emoji, which shows that he doesn't really know how the internet works. That was a while ago though, maybe he's learned, but it was like, I just didn't think that he knew he was on Instagram live. I don't think he knew he was on Instagram live and I didn't think he knew that people could just record the Instagram live from their own phones. Like, I don't, I'm trying to figure out a reason why he would do something like that. And I literally can't. So I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt because first of all, as a person, I don't think he did anything wrong. Like he was just enjoying his life. Like people do worse things in their free time. The, the bad part was that he decided to put it on Instagram live. And he's a person that's attached to a big corporate corporation like ESPN. That was a bad part. I think Paul Pierce is funny as hell for doing that. And I think that, I think it's amazing that he's living his best life. Except for he is married. I don't know if that's like, if he's married, he's not married. That could be a little problematic, I think, personally. <laughs> but as far as like, I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think he's a bad dude. I just think he's just not tech savvy. 
And I think that's, I don't know. I just thought, when I saw that, I thought it was a joke. And I saw it like really early in the morning and it wasn't trending yet. Nobody was really talking about it yet. So I was like, I'm gonna come back to the timeline later when everybody starts waking up and, and checking what's going on. But then he like posted a video of him smiling. Like, I don't know what's going on. So shout out to Paul Pierce, man. He's funny. He's unbothered. He still's rich. When people talk about, you know, he lost his ESPN check. He definitely um, will be fine. And now people think he's like, cool, cool dude. <laughs> but <laughs> I will say it's one thing about them strippers. No, I'm not. Let me leave them out of this. But if you know, you know, because I was a little disappointed in the quality of strippers that he had. Not saying that I know, you know, like what high quality strippers look like, but <laughs> the girls he had with him, I was very, very much disappointed. Um, but shout out to Paul Pierce. I hope that he recovers. I mean, there's nothing really to recover from, but I hope he bounces back. He got an offer from some cam, um, camcorder company that um, offered him $250,000 to do sports with strippers in the back. So I personally would watch that. 100% I would watch that just to see how that would work. But um, he gonna be good. But that whole situation was hilarious to me. Like, oh my goodness. All right, so we gonna segue to NBA. You know, Paul Pierce, former NBA, Hall of Famer. Boston Celtics, amazing. We love it. We love that for him. <laughs> so NBA talk. Um, now people can call in if they want to, uh, because I need. I would like to know people's MVP list at the moment. So everybody is getting hurt. So I can't even keep my list intact because people keep getting hurt so i gotta take them off the damn list so here's my list right now my top five i got some new i got some new entrants people my new and improved uh top five is in fact james harden number one but now he's hurt too but i'm gonna give him like a game a few games to see if he if he stays hurt or not. All right, James Harden number one. Uh, I still got Damian Lillard two, Joel Embiid as three, Jokic at four. My new entrant to my MVP top five is Donovan Mitchell. Yes, yes. The fact that we don't have one player from the Utah Jazz, which is the best team in the NBA right now. On the list is beyond me. Uh, Giannis basically won MVP because he was on the best team in the NBA. So I think we should give Donovan the same, you know, benefit. He has no chance to win. But uh, I think he should be in the conversation. He's hooping. He's on the best team in the league. He should at least get a nod. Okay. So I have that's my five. Um, I have. Um, some asterisks that could, you know, sneak in depending on injuries and stuff. I have Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and Steph Curry. Not That's not in any order, but those are just like the three bonus picks. So, um, yeah, that's my new five. I think it's a good five. I think it's a great five. And, I'm, and, I, and I apologize to Donovan Mitchell, who has been hooping his ass off all season. And he has never um, gotten that nod. Like, I don't, I don't understand why. Okay, so that was my five. And I threw Steph Curry in there um, because he's playing out of his mind with very limited resources. And he showed that this week when they played Giannis. Actually, Giannis wasn't even playing. So, I mean, this win means a lot, but... It means a little less 
But um, Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors beat Milwaukee this week in a comeback win. Steph had 30 points in the second half. I actually was having a conversation with somebody a few days ago, and I was just like, is the Golden State era over? Is it is it done? Have people figured them out? Da 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 da. Um, and then they'd go and beat Milwaukee. So I don't know. Steph is he has put his team in the position to make the playoffs. Um, they are sitting comfortable at the what seed are they? Let me check. The 10 seed, which in any regular season would mean they have no chance to make the playoffs. But now, since the NBA want to be extra, they now have a play-in tournament, which allows the 7 through 10 seeded teams in the respective conferences to play the 8 seed, which... I personally hate. I hate it because why are you penalizing the seven and eight seeds for making the playoffs? Because y'all want the nine and 10 to have a chance. Like that's not how playoffs works. That's not how the season works. I really hate it. Obviously, I think that the NBA is doing it to make some extra money. So from a business standpoint, I understand that. But for a team, if I'm on a team that's a seven or eight seed, I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm so pissed and I hate that. And I just don't understand the point of it. But um, I'm just, like you see all the guys are already getting injured a lot and things like that. So why would they add more games? So I feel like at this point, it's like a strategic thing. So how, how do you prepare the seven through 10 teams to like not burn themselves out? So you have a, a seven seed, do you have them kill themselves to try to get to the six seed? Or do you let them chill and float around in the seven through 10 and then just be confident that they'll make it out of the plans. I don't know. It's a strategic thing. I just don't, I don't know. But I personally don't like it. We have a guest. Hello, Nathan. Lexi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? So, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, I just wanted to do, like you said, your MVP list. Have my MVP list. So I'm kind okay. of doing it backwards. I'm doing five through one. So I have Donovan Mitchell, number five. Okay. I have I have the, 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 the Joker at four. I have Embiid at three. Dame Dollar at two. And Harden at number one. The only reason why I don't think Harden will win, in my opinion, even though I think personally he should be the MVP, I think because it went down with that went, went down in Houston. I think how all that kind of thing came apart. I think yeah. there's some people that hold, it. but I'm not gonna lie. He proved me wrong. I didn't think I, I didn't think it was gonna work because I kind of was like, well, can he and can he and Kyrie sacrifice? And I mean, technically. We haven't seen if it was going to work yet because the three of them have only played, I think, one game together. One game together. together. I think KD's playing tonight, too. So. Yeah. So, oh, technically, there the experiment has not even started yet, if we're being honest. So, well, I was, hope, I was hoping it would start, but KD's been, like, taking a sweet time. If you stay off, you know, social media and get his butt back on the court, I'd be, I'd be excited. Yeah. Damn. With his, oh man, that man is funny. Yeah, he needs to get back on the court. But I just think that James Harden, the numbers he's putting up is like, they're unbelievable. And he's winning For without, sure. he's winning without um, both of them the majority of the nights. So, them. yeah, well, I think on top he, of that, he had LaMarcus and Blake Griffin. So, and Joe Harris. 
Yeah. See, like, okay, I'm not that excited. I wasn't really that excited about Blake. I'm a little, a little excited about Lamarcus, but like, I'm not. People are like, "Oh my God, the team!" And I'm just like, mm. "I'm weak that we're calling it an experiment." By the way, I think that's funny. But yeah, our, yeah. our top five looks similar, get. huh? I said we just don't. You said we just don't know what it looks like. And I mean, at this point, I mean. I'm kind of surprised everyone's kind of like not really on the Blake Griffin bandwagon anymore. I I mean, Blake to me, I think could still be a great player. I just think, you know, as you get older, you have to find ways to just change your game. He's not the same high and flying, you know, like he was in Los Angeles. And then LaMarcus Aldridge, I, I already knew he really wasn't that, he wasn't that guy, guy if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, he's a great player, but like, he's not going to like elevate you know, your team where he was winning like 60 games, like the Greek Freak, for example. So, yeah. I mean. I mean, the game has changed. So, like, at Blake, Blake Griffin's prime, like, people weren't shooting threes as much as they were that exactly. than they are now. So, yeah, I, I like, I feel, I, I feel for Blake because he was hurt. So, like, he hasn't really had time to, like, reinvent himself as a player. Like, he's going to have to, especially right. playing with this team. So, yeah, this team, yeah. I don't think he's going to be a, a huge difference maker right now, but I feel like maybe in the finals, East finals, if they get there, he might become like an X factor type player. So that's right. exciting. But I still think James Harden, he's like clear number one for MVP right now. And if MB right, wasn't hurt, if MB wasn't hurt all the time, he would be hurt. clear number one in my opinion. But and LeBron, I mean, LeBron he was Le LeBron was in my top five up until he got hurt. So yeah. I think they're going to have really, like you were saying, with seven through ten. I would do what I call it the Greg Popovich uh, rule: seven through ten, just really rest the guys. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, if you got to do that, for, you got to do it for everybody else. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think for a guy like LeBron, you know, you only had what seventy-two days off compared to the other teams where they almost had like a whole month, like a whole year off. Like that's a lot at his age. And others too, when you don't have that opportunity to really rest yourself and you got to get back in the gym. Like, I know, like for you guys, I'm pretty sure, like, a quick turnaround, like, you know, everyone's playing overseas and then they got to come back over here, not really having that opportunity to rest. So, yeah, I think that there's going to have to be some, some changes when it comes to that. So, yeah, for sure. And I, I think did that... have, I did have two questions. Okay. That I wanted to ask you. My first question is um, when the, with the with the season coming up, like how, will, like what's like what's it going to be like? Are you guys going to be like in a bubble, or are you guys going to just no, be like doing y'all thing? No bubble, no bubble. Um, we're not really sure how the season's going to look at the moment. We don't even have our schedule yet. Um, but training camp starts at the end of the month, and month. that is all the information I have right now. Um, but I do know that we are not doing a bubble because. No other other sports are doing bubbles, so they've they've clearly made it possible. So hopefully right. we can do that. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I've been I've been following on Twitter, Draymond Green, you know, talking about the uh, WNBA and NBA wage gap, and like I I, I just want to know like where where do you stand with his comments? Um. I think that I think I agree with uh, Becca's comments and Angel's comments when they were asked about um, the comments when they're at USA Basketball. I just think that it came it came from a good place, but he lacked uh, information and research. So I think when people saw us responding, I don't really respond that much to it because I don't like to give things like that too much energy. I think people thought we were attacking him when in reality, I just think he was doing, he was doing a lot of criticizing and not supplying um, solutions. And I just, we as a league, as the people who cover our league, people like me who start a podcast, people like, other other players who do so many things off the court to try to be seen and visible and have their voices heard. I just felt like they just thought it was just a complete 
blindsided shot because we're like, everything that you're saying that we need to do, we 100% have been doing for years now. Right. So that's how I felt about it. I'm not mad at Draymond. He says a lot of things all the time that don't make a lot of sense. So he wasn't like, let me just be an asshole today to the WNBA. Like, he's an asshole all the time. So that's just who he is. And that's, what's, that, what, that's what makes Draymond Draymond. So um, I appreciate him saying something, though. It started up another conversation. But I just wish he was a little more informed before he decided to speak on, on us and our off-court activities. Oh, we lost him. Y'all, I wasn't trying to talk about that Draymond nonsense. I was not, but I did. And if y'all don't know what happened, just go on his Twitter and you guys can see that he was uh, talking about the women's tournament and our stories and why we're not a global game. And it was just another, it was, it was just, it was it wasn't terrible. So I'm not going to I'm not going to trash him at, at all because I don't think that he was trying to be uh disrespectful to us in any way, but it was just very ignorant. So hopefully now he's been informed. Hopefully he's in conversations with some of us. He out the players that he Want their opinions on his his statements. So hopefully he's had some conversations, had some self reflection. Um, he's one of the guys sitting at the table. So I think we're doing all that we can to have a voice and be seen and be heard and be likable and be accessible to brands and fans and everything. So at the end of the day, it just comes down to the people who are sitting at the table and we're trying to, we trying to get seats at the table so they can either help us to the table or continue to shoo us away from the table. And honestly, it's, it's on them at this point because there's not really much more as players that we can do. We come out, we put a, we play hard, we show up, we come with a good attitude, we do everything that they need us to do, and we still get a lot of criticism. So I tweeted this. I said, men speak on women's business and criticize more than provide more than they provide solutions. And I stand by that statement because that just doesn't apply to sports. That applies to life. Men always got something to say with things that are going on with women. And it's a lot of questions and there's a lot of critiques and none of them provide any type of solutions or help. So I just want to see that. Uh, I want to see that change. I really do. I'm seeing if there's anybody else who wants to call in before I get to my last topic of the day. And it is the... Um, top 25 under 25 list that ESPN released this week. And here's my thing about these lists that ESPN creates. One, I want to see who puts these lists together. I just want to see who it is. Cause I just want to have a conversation with these people. And secondly, I think they put out lists and they make sure that they put a list together. That's going to cause, Uproar or um, uproar or debates and make people mad. So I think that's why they put out these lists. So I think that their list was ridiculous, one. And I stopped reading the list after the third person because it was LaMelo Ball at number three. And I know I talk about how much I love Melo's game and all that stuff but he is 19 and there are so many good players under the age of 25 that are better than Lamelo. and the fact that they put him at number three oh man i was just like what are y'all doing <laughs> like do y'all want people to hate this kid 
<laughs> because he just we just he just comes out of hoops. Y'all want to put him on the number three, uh, on the number on the top twenty five under twenty five list. Um, I don't know. Oh, we got Nathan back. So we're talking about the top twenty five under twenty five. No, it's okay. Did you see that list yeah. of the top five under twenty five? I'm I'm like Stephen A. I, I got a I got questions. Um, I, I'm a fan. I think Mellow Ball is definitely my rookie of the year, without a shadow of a doubt. But I don't like the fact that you put him ahead of Devin Booker, Jason Tatum. Um, I, I mean, and and I think honestly, when we make lists. Like that, I think we're making based on like what they're doing right now. Like, and it's like I understand that. You know the Celt. You know I'm not sure if you're taking into consideration, well wow, how, yeah, how the Celtics team is. Yeah. yeah. So like with Jason Tatum, I'm not sure if that's taking into account. But the Phoenix Suns last time I checked, I believe they're second in the West. So like, yeah, I don't think I don't think that list had anything to do with team performance. I think that people wanted to start some problems, so people would talk about it, which that's exactly what happened. But it has like a, ne- it has a negative effect on the on the players. Now people are like mad at Melo for being on a list that he didn't even make. So, but yeah, that I mean, list is bad. I, mean, I think it was what a couple years ago where Melo Carmelo Anthony was like, I want to say like he was like in the top 40, 50, something like that, and everyone had a problem with it. Like there was not forty five players better than Carmelo Anthony, but. Again, I think that's just always been ESPN. They make lists just to, like you said, just to piss us off. So, um, I definitely think Lamelo Lamelo should not have been that high. I think Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum should be. Trey Young should definitely been in the top five, in my opinion. But you know, I think it's just, I think more. I think it's more about what the play that the the players' performance. And I think the energy they bring, but I also I think when they make these polls, I think they're basing it on. I hate to say like what they're doing for their team. So, and I get yeah. that Lamelo there, and he's make he's putting he's making he's making Charlotte better before his injury, but. I mean, come on now. He's only it's. I guess if it was like year three. That's right. fair, but. I mean, he's still like he's like I said I said earlier he's only nineteen so like. It's not like he's 24 and he's like, this is his last chance to be on this list. Like, he has exactly. all the years in the world to be the best under yeah, 25. The the so, the yeah, that list is the best. it's like every list they put out gets worse and worse. But it's like they like chaos. ESPN is like very like much promoting chaos on the internet lately. And I think it. it's, it's literally so with, uh-huh. chaotic. But they only do it with exactly. basketball. No, well, they do it with football too. They, um, but there's, like so, there's so many. I feel like there's so many football players. Like you can't, you can't make like lists like that for people to like realistically debate unless you like a diehard football fan. That's what I think. Well, like for example, so it was like year last the year before. Everyone was in the upheaval that Lamar Jackson was number one, but Patrick Mahomes number four, and it wasn't yeah. based. It was. Of the season, not like of all time. It was that season. But like, how do you even, and then how do you even list? How do you even make a list like that for football players when like there are players like a Patrick Mahomes cannot do what a, like a linebacker does, and like well, it's all uh, based on the peer. A safety, which is- a safety can't do what a quarterback does, but the quarterback is always oh. the best player on the team. That's why I don't like football because I don't think like I don't think it's fair. <laughs> I don't think I it's fair. You. Because you have offense and defense. You have, like, because in basketball, you have to do a little bit of everything. Like, maybe if you can't shoot threes, but you can make up for it another way. If you can't post up, you make up for it another way. But in football, you're good at one thing and one thing only. And then you are competing with someone else who does nothing that you do. So I don't know if I'm if I'm a, a lineman or whatever position that they play, and I'm looking at all the quarterbacks making. 60 70 million dollars a year i'm pissed (laughs) i'm mad (laughs) like i'm mad because 
I can't do what they do, but they can't do what I do. But why do they get $70 million and I get $2 million? So that's that's always been my beef for football. And that's why God made me a girl, because football was never in the cards for me for that exact reason, because I just I can't wrap my mind around playing one, playing one side of the ball and two, doing something really, really well and then have a teammate who like could never like do what I do and then vice versa. That's like, fair. That's fair. I can't like, wrap my mind around that at all, which is why I think they make the kids play football like age seven. So they ingrain it into their brains. Brains. <laughs> <laughs> well, too, is, like when they make those polls, they do it based on it, it's the peers too. So it's everybody collectively. Like these are your kids, like everyone around the league. So like everyone, like for example, that's in the Ravens locker room. Okay, they're going to say, okay, they're going to vote, rank your top one hundred players. So it's not like the biased, fact that anymore. like the fact that like this past year. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, and Tom Brady were probably the top 10 players in the NFL is crazy to me. But they were, but like, they're old. <laughs> like, well, they're old as hell. I, I, I can see what you're old as That's dirt. Fair. So it's just like <laughs> things like that. That's funny to me. There's the differences Did between what I, football. I need, I need to know real quick what, who, who's your. For the WNBA, who is your top ten for this for this upcoming season? Players? Yes. Oh Lord. Well. Um. All right. I'm not even. I'm not going to put this in order. One because some people oh, you have, have to put it in order. Them. Straight up. A lot of people haven't played in a while. Didn't play last year, so I'm just going to list off the ten. Okay, we'll go. Um. Diamond to Shields. Um, Chicago. Asia, who plays for Ve Asia Wilson in Vegas. Um, Deladon, obviously. Washington. Washington. Ooh, this is hard. Chelsea Gray for Vegas now. She she moved. Be Ken Parker for Chicago. Chicago. Go back home. Um, Fee, Nafisa, my teammate. Minnesota. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say Kayla McBride because I think that she's gonna have a crazy season because I feel like she has she feels like she has a lot to prove. That's a steal. Y'all stole her. That's I a know, good I'm pickup. Really Y'all stole her. Sure. I'm really excited for her and the season that we're about to have because I think that like we all are rooting for her, so we want her to have a great season. That's seven. Um I'll put Skylar in there because she played really well in the bubble and it was really good to see her back on the court. Um, mm, oh, Natasha Howard, who's now on the oh, Liberty. Oh, that's the Liberty. So now she's like going to be like that girl for the first time. So I'm excited for her about that. Stewie, obviously. Um, and then I'll give like a bonus few. Um, Arike. Um, who else? I'm a, okay. I'm gonna give two two bonus from from what I've seen um, based on how they've been playing overseas. So I'm not gonna say that they're they're gonna be top ten players, but I think people are gonna like see them have like a big leap. Is Katie Lou, who's up for Katie MVP? For sure. I agree with that. Who's up for MVP in Euroleague, which is amazing. Um, and then I'm gonna put a tie between Satu and uh, Gabby Williams, who are also playing really well in Euroleague. So I okay. think it's crazy we have. Does it, to pay does it say, Satu plays with Kay, she plays with Kayla, right? I, I can't remember the team, but then I know they play together. Turkey, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, it's gonna be a fun season. Like I think everybody is gonna have a really good year, and I think everyone's gonna be excited to be out of the bubble. So I can't, I can't playing, wait. I'm excited. Yeah, so am I. And they've been playing really well overseas. So it's been really cool to see them um, hoop over there. For sure. Yeah, I definitely can't wait. Cause I know watching the, my, my mystics, I was kind of, especially I was like, damn, like how did we get to the playoffs with this team? But 
I mean, we didn't have Della Dawn, obviously. We got Tina, we got, you know, we didn't have Tina Charles. And, you know, we lost Ariel. Y'all stole her too. Um, and <laughs> obviously, Tiana, you know, she's down in Atlanta. Um, I really, I really liked Alyssa Clark, but you hear that she, you know, had to get surgery on her foot. Um, that was, I, that's not, a, that's not a loss, but that's kind of like a small step back. So, um, I'm really hoping, um, I'm really kind of serious with the, really what they're going to look like, but I'm really excited with every, how everyone's going to look. So I think my sleeper team for the finals is going to be definitely Chicago. Yeah. And then obviously. They're the like they're only a sleeper team because they haven't gotten there and they should have, they, I, I thought they were going to get there last year, but then they had some injuries. So I think they're yeah. like prime for a, a breakout season as a team. So. Yeah. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. I'm really happy that you came on to chat. Yes, I'm I'm excited. I feel bad. I missed the I, I didn't get a chance to tune in last week. So I'm glad I got the opportunity to tune in this week. So well, of course I appreciate your support. Make sure you tune in next week too. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right. Well, that is all we got for today. Let me circle back to the WNBA conversation real quick. I listed 10 players, 10, 12 players, but that is the craziest thing about the WNBA. There's way more than 10 to 12 players that are incredible in our league that are primed to be top 10 players in our league every every season. It's a different group of players that have amazing seasons. So I hope that you guys tune into our season this year. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. If you enjoyed watching the women's tournament, you will love watching us hoop because we got some hoopers in this league. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys want to listen, uh, you can type in, just call me on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or go to www.talktome.today, right? I keep messing that up, <laughs> but thank you guys for supporting me. I love y'all. I will see y'all next week. <laughs>